Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining this webinar. Uh, today we will talk uh, about uh, DREDEC, uh, specific to our DREDEC route, that is we go 3910. Before we start, uh, we just wanted to introduce uh, DBCOM technology to all of you. DBCOM technology is value-added distributor for uh, communication product lines. Uh, we have uh, products for different portfolios. Uh, we have video conferencing. We have Microsoft Teams certified devices. We have Zoom Rooms devices. We have IP telephony. We have cloud contact center. We have call center. We have complete range of uh, access control, intercom and door access that you are looking for. And also we have wireless solution for Wi-Fi and household. Um, so along with the Dretic, uh, we do have a uh, different brands that we carry with us. So we have Yelling, we have Yescha, we have Dretic, we have Chuan, we have Milesite, we have Equox, we have Xkelly, we have Loe, and uh, we have email collaboration platform that is called Icebox. So uh, DBCOM is value added distributor for all these brands. So we add value to these brands in this region because uh, we have certified engineer with us uh, who puts input to all these product lines and we sell this product in this market and we add values to this product. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, my colleague, Mr. Sesu will start technical session soon. Thank you very much for joining. If you have any concern, any questions, you can just type it uh, over there. Uh, you can just uh, go to your bottom or right top, or you will find the chat option, or question and answer option, and you can just type it over there. Once uh, uh, Mr. Sesu will finish this session, he will address each and every question. Along with this webinar, we do have a on in-house training for those who are interested, who wants to uh, do hands-on training for Dretec devices. Uh, uh, mostly we do it on Saturday. So if you are interested, you can write to us, uh, uh, sales at datawise.com or support at datawise.com or you can write to SESU directly. Thank you very much for joining. Over to Mr. SESU. Thank you. Thank you, Gesho. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, very interesting topic, guys, that we are going to discuss about the bigger 3910, which is the SME router, small and medium enterprise router. And the main uh, important for this webinar is that we are going to see what are the features and uh, what are the specifications and uh, what, are, what type of configurations we can able to do it and what are the advantages that you are going to give it to your customers. So those things we are going to discuss about it. And uh, if you have any concerns, in case if I'm in case if time is not sufficient, then you guys send it to me a mail like sayshu@datawise.com so that I'm going to reply you back. And as Kesho said, that there is a technical training that is available on Saturdays in our office. So in case if you like to come for the training, you are welcome. And we are going to give you the training on the real devices, and we will discuss about the real scenarios which you are finding day to day. So I, especially as you know that the Dretec, it has a multiple products, like you can say that Dretec switches, Dretec routers, and Dretec access points. And uh, today mainly we are going to focus the Vega 3910, and which is the enterprise router. And let's see what are the features it's going to support. I hope my voice is audible to everybody. And uh, we will spend this one hour and we will discuss about the complete features. Yeah. So the first thing is that before I start to discuss about the features, we can discuss about the specifications of bigger 3910. So first thing is that if you see the specifications, like what are the interfaces it's available? And by default, this router, it's going to come with total 12 interfaces. Out of 12 interfaces, eight interfaces, we can able to use it as a LAN or you can able to use it as a WAN. So if you see here, there is a two interfaces, which is SFP plus, which means there is a fiber ports and it's going to support 10 gig, 2.5 gig and one gig. And either you can use these ports as a LAN or you can able to use it as a WAN. 
based on your requirement, you can able to use it. And second one is that there is a 2.5 gig. These are the multi gig ports. So these multi gig ports, you will get only two ports and it's going to support 2.5 gig, 1 gig, 100 MB and 10 Mbps. And these are the copper ports. And there is a four ports and these are the one gig copper ports. Either you can use it as a WAN or you can use it for LAN. So total, you can able to connect eight internet connections. In case if you are going to use eight internet connections, you can able to connect directly. And next thing is that there is a fixed LAN ports, which is four ports, which these are the copper ports. If you see here in my design, there is these four ports, you can able to use it for the LAN. And these remaining eight ports, either you can use it for LAN or you can able to use it for WAN. So you can able to do the switchable. So I'm going to show it to you how to switchable between the LAN and WAN as well. So these are the ports that are able to use it for the LAN. And the last, the four ports that dedicatedly you can use it for the LAN. And the remaining eight ports, you can able to use it for LAN and WAN. Then after that, there is a USB port in case if you want to connect to like any USB drive, and you can able to collect the logs and all, you can able to connect to the USB port. And in case if you want to do some troubleshooting, you can connect the console port and you have a separate console port and you can run some diagnose commands and you can able to get the, and you can able to see what's going on. And in case if you want to reset the device, there is a reset button over there. So you can able to reset it, just you can hold, you can take the paper clip and hold for five seconds or 15 seconds, then automatically the device will go to the reboot and it will go to the factory reset. So this is the overview of these specifications. And next, if you see the performance, and basically the performance, the NAT throughput is 9.4 Gbps, and IPsec performance is 3.3 Gbps, and SSL VPN performance is 1.6 Gbps, and it's going to support up to 1 million NAT sessions, and you can able to configure IPsec VPN tunnels almost 500, and you can able to configure max concurrent open VPN plus SSL VPN. You can able to configure 200. So basically this SSL VPN and all, we can call it as a remote dialing users. Most of the time when the users are working from home or the traveling people, the users, they are going to travel continuously. For them, we are going to configure the SSL VPN. And the VPN tunnels, we are going to configure between the sites. For example, if you have a office in Dubai and one more office in Sharjah, if you want to establish a communication between them, then you can able to configure the VPN tunnels. So basically this router is a high-end router and it's going to have a high throughput and high performance. So this is the performance wise. Now today's what we are going to do exactly, for example, if you take the internet connection, what type of the connections we can able to terminate in this router? So the first one is the PPPOE, which is point to point protocol over ethernet. Then usually if you are going to take internet connection from your ETSL or to sometimes you are going to get the username and password. So these connections, we can call it as a point to point protocol over ethernet. So if you have a PPPOE connection, you can terminate directly to your router. Or in sometimes you are going to get the DHCP. So some service providers, they are going to tell you, you just connect this cable to your router, then automatically you are going to get the internet connection. And as you know that the moment when you connect the when you connect the internet, for example, you are getting the internet through DHCP, automatically the default route is going to inject to your routing cable. And uh, some service provider, they are going to give you the static IP, like they are going to give you static IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, preferred DNS and alternate DNS. You need to configure it manually. So in UAE, most of the time, you can able to see the PPPOE connection or you can able to see the static IP. So some service providers, they are like do and all, they're going to give you the static IP address so that you need to configure it manually in your router. And uh, the PPPOE, you are going to get the username and password. So these parameters, you need to configure it in your device. So by default in the Dratec, it's going to support PPPOE, DHCP and static. And also we are going to support the IPv6. I believe still nobody is using the IPv6. In case if you want to use, you can able to use the IPv6. And as well as there is a 802.1 PRQ in case if you want to specify the cost values, class of service values. And if you want to connect uh, inter multiple internet connections with the different, different VLAN taggings, you can able to do that as well. So that is one more feature it's going to support. And again, there is a multi VLAN and PVC. If you want to connect your setup box, it's a setup box or something, if you want to connect and if you want to use it for IPTV and if you want to use for telephony and internet, then you can able to connect it as well. And also the main important thing that we need to understand, this one is going to do the load balance. This is one of the very important feature. 
So basically, we are going to support the load balancing either IP based or session based. So IP based is nothing bad. Based on your IP address, it does the load balance. And mostly it's going to use the single internet connection. Let's say that uh, you have a Dratec router and which is connected with two internet connections. So in case if you are going to use the, if you enable by default IP based is enabled, whenever you are by default IP based is enabled and whenever the request come to the router, it's going to use the single line for sending your information. So it's going to check the source IP and it's going to check the destination IP and it doesn't do the, it doesn't use the both internet connections. At a time, it's going to use a single internet connection. But if you are going to choose a session based, then session based, it's going to do the aggregation between the multiple internet connections and the NAT sessions are going to divide and it's going to distribute between two multiple WAN internet connections. So most of the time, whenever you want to do the WAN aggregation, you need to select the session based. So basically the session based, okay, what it does, the, the NAT sessions are going to distribute it between among the multiple internet connections. So that's, uh, you can able to use the complete bandwidth. For example, let's say if you are getting 100 Mbps in this line, and if you are getting 100 Mbps in this line, so both you are going to get 200 Mbps. So it's going to aggregate and it will give you 200 Mbps is the bandwidth. And these NAT sessions are going to distribute between these two lines. So that is the advantage of session based. And by default, all your internet connections are going to be in the LAN, LAN. It does the load balancing by default. So you nothing to worry. By default, whenever you connect multiple internet connections, automatically they will be in the LAN load balancing pool. And it does the load balancing automatically. And also, if you want to act on demand, like for example, if one link is down, then automatically it will go to the second link. So that you can able to do some kind of ping. For example, I'm going to enable the ping for the link detection. Let's say I'm going to say ping 4.2.2. So what it does, uh, I'm going to put for you some threshold value. If I don't get some reply for certain minutes or seconds, then automatically it's going to use the second line. So the, like this, you can able to identify the which fan is going to act you or which fan is going to work and all. And other one is that there is a dynamic DNS. We are going to support the dynamic DNS as well. In case if you have uh, dynamic DNS from the no IP, or if you have from different vendor, dynedns.org or any other vendors, it's going to support the dynamic DNS in case, but if you are going to take a dynamic DNS from no IP or someone every year, you need to pay some amount. So it will be expenses for you. But if you are going to use the Dratec router by default, we are going to provide for you one trade DNS, which is totally free by using the trade DNS. You can able to use for your VPN configurations. You can able to do the port forwarding and you can able to access your internal servers and whatever you want to do, you can able to do it. So this trade DNS is totally free for you. And per device, we are going to provide for you one ready DNS. You can able to use it. So these are the features that you can able to configure it. And mostly, why I'm going to highlight in this feature, for example, especially if you are going to take a PPPoE connection, by default, you are going to get the dynamic public IP. So this public IP is going to change at any time. So based on this public IP, if you try to configure the VPN, maybe if the public IP get changed, automatically the tunnel will become down. So to avoid these kind of situations, we always recommend to use the trade DNS. So the trade DNS, what it does, it's going to map your public IP with your DIN DNS. So that whenever the public IP gets changed, automatically your trade DNS is going to get updated. So you nothing to worry. You nothing to worry. Your tunnel is always up and running. So these are the features, especially for the internet connection. So the next one is that land management. For the land management is that we are going to support the maximum number of VLANs, 50. And the very important is that, that there is a tag based and there is a port based. So this is one of the very important guys. So most of the time, so the port based is nothing, but let's say we have a multiple LAN ports are there. Let's say that I have a port number five, port number six, port number seven, port number eight. So each and every port in the tray tech, what you can do, you can keep it to the different, different VLANs. So in my layer to switch, what I'm going to do, let's say port number five, I keep it in VLAN number 50. Port number six, I'm going to keep it in VLAN number 60. Port number seven, I'm going to keep it in VLAN number 70. Port number eight, I'm going to keep it in VLAN number 80. So that each and every interface, we are going to keep it into the different VLANs. So this is, we can call it as a port based. So 
as I told you earlier, in the Great Tech Bigger 3910, we have a LAN ports and we have a WAN ports. In the LAN ports, each and every port, we can keep into the different VLAN according to your requirement. So as you know that the VLANs, what we are going to do, we are going to do the logical segregation. For example, in your company, maybe you want to keep your salespeople into the different VLAN, your users into the different VLAN, and your guest people into the different VLAN, and your servers into the different VLAN. That time, what we are going to do, we are going to create the VLANs in your layer two switch. But again, if you want to do your internet access or if you want to provide the internet access and all, what we are going to do, we are going to route through your traffic to the internet or the router. So that time what you can do in the Dray Tech, the good feature is that you can keep each and every port into the different VLAN. I think somebody is trying to ask me a question. Yeah, sure, Mr. Ali, no issues. Yeah, I will discuss about that. Yeah. Because the concern is that we need to cover the more topics. That's why at the end of the session, I will discuss about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. So that is one feature, guys. That is the port based. So the port based is nothing but each and every port you can able to keep into the different VLAN. That is, we can call it as a port based. And tag based is nothing but we are going to configure, we are going to carry the multiple VLANs information through single interface. So, for example, if you see here, Let's say that I let me walk on the paint so that everybody is going to be clear. Yeah. So now if you see guys, I think you're able to see my screen as well. Right, guys, everybody? Yeah, right. So now if you see here, let's say this is my Dretech router and which is connected to the internet, for example. And the Dretech router, which is connecting to the switch, in the switch, what we are going to do, we configured multiple VLANs. Let's say VLAN number 10, VLAN number 20, and VLAN number 30, and VLAN number 40, like that. So what I'm going to do this, let's say this is port number 24, which is connected on port number 4 on the Dray Tech. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to configure in the layer to switch as a trunk port. So the trunk port is nothing but we can call it as a tag port, which is going to carry all the VLANs information. Are you understand, guys? You are going to carry all the VLANs information through this port. And in the P4, what we are going to do, we are going to enable the VLAN tag. So whenever the traffic coming from VLAN number 10, and I can enable as a VLAN number 10, and I'm going to configure one virtual interface there for VLAN number 10, and I'm going to give the IP address, which is 192.168.10.1. So whenever the traffic coming from VLAN number 20, which is going to come from 24, port number 24 in the switch, and it's going to come to port number four on the router. And we are going to tag to well, as a 20, VLAN number 20, and we are going to configure like 192.168.20.1, similarly like 30.1, similarly like 40.1. Like this, we are going to create multiple virtual interfaces for each and every VLAN. So that time, your Dratech router, what it does is going to act as a gateway for all these VLANs. On top of this, what you can do, you can able to configure the DHCP and you can able to configure the DNS. Because since in the layer two switch, you cannot be able to configure like interval and routing, you cannot able to do that and you cannot able to route the traffic. So that's why what we are going to do, we are going to use as a tag based. By using this, tag, by using this port number four, we are going to get all VLANs information like VLAN number 10, 20, 30, and 40. And we will create the gateway for every VLAN and we are going to enable the DHCP and DNS. So this is one of the beautiful feature. And on top of that, if you want to reserve the IP to MAC, you can able to reserve as well. Based on the MAC address, for example, if your manager Sundar, if you want to reserve specific IP address, you can able to take his MAC address, you can able to reserve it as well. So those are the features that you can able to configure. And especially for the tag, it's going to use 802.1Q protocol, which is the tag based protocol. And through the single interface, you can able to carry multiple VLANs information. So that is tag based. And again, if you are going with any other vendors, it's going to support by default the tagging protocol as 802.1Q. For example, maybe your customers, they have a Cisco switches or they have HP switches, they have a, some other switches like TP-Link or D-Link or any other switches, they can able to support by default .1Q protocol. So in the, inside your layer two switch, simply you can configure the VLANs and you just configure one of the interface as a tag interface and connect it to Dratech router. Once you connect it to the Dratech router, there you can tag, you can add all these VLAN IDs. Then you can configure these sub interfaces for every VLAN. On top of that, you can able to configure the DHCP, DNS and all. 
Then after that, there is a port base, especially as I told you that every interface you can able to keep into the different VLANs. Then after that, it's going to support maximum 50 VLANs. If you go with Vigor 3910, and again, the DLCP server, you can able to configure it with multiple IP subnets. In case if you want to configure any specific DLCP options, you can able to configure. And you can able to bind IP to MAC as well. So if you, as I told you that, in case if you want to reserve the specific IP address, then you can take the MAC address and reserve with that IP address. And you can able to create the alias name. And you can able to go with the LAN IP pool count up to 4,000 in each subnet. In one subnet, you can able to define up to 4,000. And in case if you want to configure a PPPoE server, you can able to do it as well. So the PPPoE server means you can able to build your own PPPoE server and you can able to configure the usernames and password and you can give it to the, your users. The moment when they try to access the internet, it will prompt you to provide the username and password. And that password and username, you can able to configure inside your router itself. And also you can able to enable the local DNS server. And if you want to do the conditional DNS forwarding, you can able to do it as well. And also we are going to support the hotspot feature. So hotspot feature is nothing but if anybody guests come to your office, if you want to provide the internet access, you can able to provide the internet access through your hotspot. Like we are going to provide for you click through, social login, SMS pin. Social login is nothing but either you can go with Facebook or you can able to go with Google. And SMS pin is nothing but you can able to go with any third party SMS vendor, you can able to integrate to your router. And as well as if you want to do it the radius integration, you can able to do it as well. And in case if you want to do with the external portal server, you can able to do it by using third party API, you can able to integrate it as well. So those are the features which is available in, in your LAN management. But again, I'm going to mention it most of the time, whenever in your customer places, you can able to deploy in two ways. The first one is that you can create the multiple VLANs in case if you have a layer to switch and you are going to do the routing at in your router. And in case if it is a layer three switch, you can able to do the routing at the layer three level. And after that, you will send all the traffic to the router and router it will do the NAT because especially the router you can connect to the internet and all the traffic it will send it to the internet. Right. The next one is that networking. So especially for the routing in the network section, if you see there is a routing. So routing, basically we have a static routing and dynamic routing. So the static routing is nothing but manually you can able to configure the routes. So for example, I'll give you one scenario to guys so that you can able to understand very easily. Let's open my paint. Right. Now, if you see here, for example, I have a layer three switch. Okay, guys. And I configured the multiple VLANs, VLAN number 10, VLAN number 20, and VLAN number 30. So total, I configured three VLANs, and I configured the SVAs. SVAs means virtual interfaces. So each virtual interface is going to act as a gateway. Inside my layer three switch, I can able to configure SVAs. For example, for VLAN number 10, I have configured 192.168.10.1. For VLAN number 20, I configured 20.1. For VLAN number 30, I configured 30.1. So this 10.1 is going to act as a gateway for VLAN number 10. For 20.1 is going to act as a gateway for VLAN number 20. 30.1 is the gateway for VLAN number 30. So in case if you want to do a routing between them, you can enable the routing inside your layer tree switch itself. Okay, guys. Now, if you want to access the internet, what you are going to do, you are going to connect to your Dratec router. And let's say the router is connected with internet. So for example, between this, what we are going to do, we can able to write one static default route. So for example, I can, I can make it as a like routed ports inside my layer three switch, or else I can able to create a separate VLAN for this. Let's say I created separate VLAN and this port, let's say port number 24, I kept into VLAN number 40. And this VLAN number 40, I configured as a 40.1 is the IP address. Then after that, inside my Dratec router, I configured 40.5 is the IP address. So here, what I've done, I am going to write one default route like this, IP route 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0.0.0.0. Then I'm going to say 192.168.40.5. So I'm pointing to 40.5, which is my Dratec router. So anybody, if they're trying to access internet, the request all the way will come to the router, 
right? From the router, what it will do, we are going to enable the NAT. That's why the information will go to the internet. But here the concern is that while the traffic written from ISP to your router, it has to forward to the specific VLAN. But initially, if you see in your router, he doesn't know who is VLAN number 10, who is VLAN number 20, who is VLAN number 30. He knows about only VLAN number 40. That time, what we are going to do, we are going to write some static routes. We can call it as a static routes. And these routes, how you are going to write, we are going to tell to the router in case if you want to access 192. If you want to forward your information, 192.168.10 network. And you can say the next stop will be 40.1. That is your layer 3 switch. In case if you want to access 20 network, the next stop will be 40.1. In case if you want to access 30 network, the next stop will be 40.1. Like this, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to write the reverse static route stacks. Because whenever the traffic coming to the internet, for example, VLAN number 10, he wants to access the internet. So initially the information will go to the switch, then switch is going to check in his routing table. It has a default route. Then simply it's going to forward to the router. Then router, what it will do, it will send it to the internet. When the request coming from the internet, then router, what it will do, it will check the routing table. So the request come from VLAN number 10, then it will simply forward to the layer three switch. Then layer three switch will hand over to your VLAN number 10. So in that cases, we are going to configure the static route size. So basically the st static routes are very important to configure whenever you have an environment like in layer three. In case if you have a layer two switch environment, what you are going to do, you are going to do the routing, you are going to do the natting, everything you are going to do it at the, your router level. So th there is nothing to worry about it. But in case if you have a layer three switch is there in your network and you are just doing the routing between the VLANs in your layer three switch, but the netting and internet connection, everything you are doing at the router. So in that time, what we are going to do, we are going to configure the static routes. And also we are going to support inter-VLAN route. So as I told you that, in case if you want to communicate from one VLAN to another VLAN, for example, VLAN number 10 wants to talk to VLAN number 20, you can enable the inter-VLAN routing between the VLANs. And also we are going to support RIP version one and version two. This is next generation guys, this is for IPv6. So this is for IPv6. And in case if you want to configure RIP, you can able to configure it and the Viga 3910 is going to support. And again, OSPF, if you want to configure the OSPF, it's going to support. In case if you want to configure the BGP, you can able to configure it. And especially the BGP, if you have a MPLS network and all, if you connect your Dratec router to the MPLS network, still you can able to configure the BGP as well. So these are the features that you can able to configure it, guys. These are the routing features. So the next thing is that there is a policy based router. Sorry guys, just a minute. So the next thing is that there is a policy based routing, which is one of the very important feature guys. So the policy based routing is nothing bad. You can able to route your, for example, you have a multiple internet connections. Let's say for user traffic, I want to route through, for example, let's see guys, this is your Dratec router. I have a two internet connections. One is ISP1 and other one is ISP2. And, and let's say you are connected like this to your layer two switch and this is your Dratec router. So when the traffic coming from, let's say VLAN number 10. Okay guys, so this is belongs to my user traffic. So that time what I want to do, I want to route this traffic through ISP1. So this is the required policy based routing. So I'm going to say that when the traffic coming from VLAN number 10, which is related to my user traffic, then I'm going to forward to ISP1. Let's say I created one more VLAN, which is VLAN number 20. Then this traffic is belongs to the guest. When the guest traffic is coming, I want to route this traffic through ISP2. So you can able to define your own rules guys by using policy based routing. So you need to select the source and destination. And you need to specify the source network and you need to specify the destination network. Anyway, the destination network is nothing but it could be internet and you can say any. And again, you can say that ISP1. So ISP1 is nothing but that's your ISP1, you are going to route your traffic. You can able to select ISP1 is nothing but let's say WAN1. So I can select the destination interface your WAN1 because in policy based routing, whenever you are going to define, it will ask you what's your source, what's your destination and through which interface you are going to forward this traffic. So I can say that source is my VLAN number 10, destination is can be anything. And I'm going to use the interface as your exit interface is my WAN1. 
Like this, you can able to write it, guys. And while you are going to define the policy based routing based on the protocol. Wow, protocol is nothing but guys, you know that we have a different different protocols like a port number 80, port number 443. For example, all my HTTP, HTTPS traffic should go from one interface and or else my FTP traffic or SMTP traffic should go from other, other internet connection. You can able to define like based on the protocol, you can able to write the policy based and uh, you can define the IP address. So based on the source and destination IP address is also you can able to define it. And based on the domain name also you can able to write it. Based on the country also you can able to write the policy based routing. So this is very useful guys. So mostly you can see that in every vendor there is to say PBR. So same thing you can able to do it in your Traytek router as well. And it's completely GUI guys, you no need to worry about it. You no need to write multiple commands. In few commands you can able to do this. And next one is that high availability. So this 3910 is going to support both high availabilities. The first one is active standby and second one is hot standby. So hot standby is nothing but the single internet connection you are going to share with the two devices. Let's say that I just give you a quick example. Let's say this is my Dretek router one and this is my Dretek router two. And these two routers, they are going to share the single internet connection. Okay guys, that is your hot, hot standby. And um, if uh, if by default the primary is going to be active in case this is down, all the traffic will go from second. And active standby is nothing but guys, you are going to take a router one and you are going to take a router two. And these two internet connection, they have a two separate internet connection. One is ISP one, another one is ISP two. And these two connections are connecting to your layer two switch. And by default, let's say that I want to VLAN number 10 and 20 traffic. I just want to forward through router one and 30 and 40 traffic. I want to forward to router two. In case if router one is down again, 10 and 20 traffic will go from router. Two. In case router two is down, the traffic will go from router one. So this is the beauty of this. Either based on your requirement, either you can go with active standby or you can go with hot standby because most of the environments they are looking for the redundancy in case if the customer is asking you for the redundancy, then you can go with redundancy. And these two routers, you can able to configure with either active standby or you can able to configure as a hot standby. And uh, there is a documents are available. In case if you want to see that, you can visit our office. I'm going to show it to you how it's going to work. Out. The next one is that there is a DNS security. This is one of the very good feature guys. So in case if you enable the DNS security, so whenever the request come to your router, your gateway, the moment it's, uh, for example, you are trying to access different, different websites like google.com, facebook.com, some different banking sites, some university sites, most of the you are trying to access. So any request will come to your Traytek router. It's going to show, it's going, if you enable this DNS security feature, then it's going to verify that whether uh, you are getting a request from the right DNS server or not. We basically, as you know that how we are going to go, how you are going to the internet access. Initially, when the request come to, your router, it will send it to the DNS. The DNS will reply back with the specific public ID. Then after that, your, your system will contact to that specific server. So in case, whenever you whenever the request went to the DNS server, maybe if some uh, bogus DNS servers are there in the internet, maybe those DNS servers, they reply back to you with the different public ID. Maybe your server will contact and the user is trying to click different, different links. Maybe your system will get you know infected with virus and all. So to avoid this, we are going to configure this DNS security feature. And also we are going to do the multicasting as well. Bigger 390 is going to support the multicast and multicast is going to use the IGMP protocol, which is Interior Gateway Management Protocol. And again, we are going to do the local radius server. In case if you want to deploy the local radius server, you can able to deploy it as well. And the SMB file sharing. So SMB file sharing means you have a USB ports, you can directly connect the USB drive and you can share it to your customers, the local people in local internal, like you can use it as internal storage. In case if they want to share any files or anything, you can use that. So that is the feature of this SMB file sharing. So the next one is that the VPN part, guys. This is one of the very interesting part. Mostly the Red Egg router, it's going to support all type of VPNs. And you know that we have a two different types of VPNs. The first one is the LAN to LAN VPN. So we can call it as a side to side VPN. So the side to side VPN is nothing but let's say I have an office in Dubai and one more office in Sharjah or somewhere else. So if I want to establish a communication between them, what we are going to do guys, simply let's say I'm going to keep 
let's see here i am going to keep sorry let's say that i am going to keep router 1 here and i am going to connect it to the internet router 2 and i am going to keep no oh, sorry it's connecting to the internet and i am going to connecting to router 2 and this router is connecting to the internal network which is 192.168.1.0 and here i am going to use 192.168.2.0 now i want to establish a communication between these two networks let's say this is the office which is in dubai and this is the office which is in sharjah so i want to establish a communication between them so this type of vpn we can call it as a land to land vpn or we can call it as a site to site vpn so while you, you what you are going to do on top of your internet, you are going to establish the VPN tunnel. So you are not going to take any specific service like MTLS and all. Simply you are going to keep two Dretek routers. One is in Dubai and other was in Sharjah. And you are going to and you are connecting directly to the internet. And after that you are going to establish the VPN between them. Then after that, who is sitting in your LAN in Dubai? Who is sitting in Sharjah? The LAN they can able to communicate each other. So this is what you can able to do it guys. That's the beauty of that. And again, the next one is that teleworker to LAN. So this is, we can call it as a remote dial-in VPN. So the remote dial-in VPN is nothing but the people who is frequently traveling or nowadays due to the pandemic, most of the people they are working from home. For them, we can able to configure this VPN. So that what they can do, they are sitting at home and they simply connected to their existing internet. After that, they are going to use a smart VPN client, which is from the Dretech. And you just install the smart VPN client in your laptop or desktop. Then after that, as an administrator, you are going to provide the username and password. So they will enter the username and password and they are going to connect it to your office network and they are going to access all the resources. So that kind of VPN, we can call it as a remote dial-in VPN or you can say that teleworker to that. So these two VPNs we are going to support guys. So most of the places your customers, either they are looking for either land-to-land -land VPN or remote dial-in VPN. So in the remote dial-in VPN, uh, you no need to keep the device in a customer location, which means the end user is sitting at home. He's simply connecting to his internet. Then after that, you open his laptop, he's going to open the smart VPN client software and you just provide them username and password, that's it. But if you go with the LAN to LAN VPN and each and every location, you need to keep one device, one Dretech device, you need to keep it. So that uh, you are going to establish the VPN from one location to another location. Then next one is that the protocols which we are going to support to establish a VPN, PPTP, L2TP, IPsec, L2TP or IPsec, and SSL, GRE, IK version 2, IPsec, access authentication, and open, open VPN. These are the protocols which we are going to support. And user authentication, like you can able to, as I told you that if you, you can create the users locally in your device itself, or if you want to integrate with Radius, you can able to do that as well. LDAP it's going to support, Tag X Plus is going to support, MOTP, which is mobile application. You can able to install it in your mobile and you will get the OTP as well. And again, for IKE authentication, either you can use pre-shared key, X.509, XR, or EAP. And IPsec authentication, we are going to support SHA-1, SHA-256, and MD5. And encryption, we are going to support Microsoft multi-protocol encryption and digital encryption standard and triple test and EAS advanced encryption standard. And again, if you want to configure a redundancy in the VPN trunk, you can you can able to do it that. So this is a little bit important, guys. If you see here, the VPN trunk, for example, I have a two locations. I kept, I have taken two internet connections and I connected to the ISP and same in another location also. So here VPN trunk redundancy is nothing but, first the active VPN is this one. It's going to establish on the, one link. In case this link is down, I can able to establish the link with other internet connection. So I have a two internet connections in each location and which is connected with other side as well. So one VPN one, which is the VPN one trunk and this is your VPN two trunk. So by default VPN one trunk will be the active and second one is the VPN two and you can able to do the load balancing between them as well. But it, it should be, I, I mean, you have to take two internet connection. It should connect to the same site. So that then only it's going to work. Even if you want to do the failover between them, you can able to do it. For example, this trunk right now, it's an active state. So that by default, all your traffic is going to forward through VPN one. Whenever the VPN one is down, then automatically your traffic will go to VPN two. 
in case if it is very important then most of the people what they do they are going to take two to internet connections and these two internet connections they use it for the vpn so on top of that you can able to configure the load balancing and in case if you want to do a failover you can able to do it as well then after that there is a single om vpn in case if your single om vpn is nothing but through uh, your data router is directly only one interface is directly connecting to the your local network through that you can able to establish the vpn this is single om vpn then nat this is one of the very important feature guys so nat is nothing but in case if you are behind the nat device so for example i have a router here which is directly connected to the internet and behind that i have connected the direct router so now what i want to do and there is one more site you have it guys let's say we have one more direct router somewhere and this is also connected to the internet in case if you want to establish the vpn in other side you no need to connect directly to the internet even you are behind the internet also you can able to establish the vpn connectivity between one side to another side so that that's you can able to do it through nat so the nat feature is by default enabled in dretek and next one is the dretek vpn matcher so the dretek vpn matcher is one of the very important feature for example most of the sites if you see there especially some locations i have seen recently they are using the sim card to connect to the internet and when you connect with the sim card you are not going to get the public ip you are going to get the private ip so by using private ip you cannot able to establish the vpn or you cannot able to do the port forwarding and all so in that situations what we are going to do we are going to take the help of your vpn matcher server and we are going to establish the vpn between site a to site b so that's why in the dretek this is the very unique feature guys so especially if your customers if they have a router with the sim card if they are not able to establish the vpn or if they are not able to do the port forwarding the which vpn matcher is very helpful for them so by default this vigor 3910 is going to support the vpn match so the next one is that filtering and content firewall content filtering guys and if you see the firewall features like the first one is the nat so the nat is nothing but network address translation so it's going to translate from one ip address to another ip address but most of the time we can call it as whenever you are trying to access the internet initially the request will come to the router then router what it will do it's going to translate your private ip with the public ip and send it to the internet so we can call it as a nat and port we can able to do the port redirection so port redirection is nothing but let's say i have a single internet connection and i have a single public ip in case if i want to if i want to access multiple services from outside i can able to enable the port redirection for example i can able to give you one example guys for example 195.229.140.100 that's my public ip so this is my single public ip by using this public ip i can able to map to multiple services let's say that when the traffic coming for port number 25 for example i can send it to my smtp server and let's say when same ip address with the different port number 8080 i can forward to some other service and same public ip and let's say that 3389 which is rdp i can forward to my rdp server like this i can able to do it so this kind of redirection we can call it as a port redirection in dretek vigor 3910 you can able to support this and open ports in case if you want to open the multiple ports you can able to open it as well port triggering in case if you want to specify the specific port number and you want to hit that from outside you can able to do that so this is we can call it as a port triggering and dmg host so you can able to configure the dmg host when the traffic is hitting to the specific internet connection and you can forward all this traffic to specific internal ip you can able to do that that is called dmg host and alg sip alg we can call it as a application layer gateway sometimes you can able to find in case if you are going to enable the alg by default your voice traffic is going to block us so in case if you enable the for example if you configure the vpn make sure that you need to disable this alg that's why most of the time we are going to receive this the phones are able to register it through vpn but we are able to hear the one way audio issues and all so to avoid the one way audio issues and all you need to disable the alg and the vpn pass through in case if you are trying to access directly to directly by using ipsec or pptp or lttp 
you can able to enable it and uh, you can forward all this VPN traffic through your Traytech router and you can able to access. So this is, we can call it as a VPN pass through. But most of the time we can able to configure either IPsec or SSL or PPTP or LTT. And IP-based firewall policy. So IP-based firewall policy is nothing but it's simply like layer three policy guys. So the layer three policy is nothing but based on the source IP and based on the destination IP, you are going to write the policies. So these policies, we can call it as a IP-based firewall policy. So in case you can able to say that when the traffic coming from the specific source and when it's going for specific destination, either you can able to allow or deny, you can able to specify it. And also there is a content filtering. So the content filtering, we are going to support the application and the URL, DNS keywords and web features and web category. And we have only one license you need to purchase guys. This is a subscription based that is a WCF license, web content filtering license. And it has a certain categories. And like you can able to say that uh, games is a one category, jobs is another category and social media, like different, different categories are there. So that you no need to remember each and every website. You don't know which website is going to come under social media or anything. In case if your management tells you that all social media has to be blurred. So instead of that searching in the internet, what are the social media sites and all? Simply what you can do, just you can go to that category. You can select the social media. So then simply you can say block. Then the moment when you say block, all the social websites, everything is going to block. And in case if you want to configure it manually, for example, this URL filtering and all, if you want to configure it manually, take each and every website manually and you can apply, you can configure it. For example, I want to block Facebook and I'm going to create one object as a Facebook object. And I'm going to create a, uh, like um, a games or uh, some games or some other websites. If you don't want to allow, just create the object for it and create into put everything into the single group. Then after that, you can make action as a block. Then after that, you can write a firewall rule. When the traffic is trying to hit, whenever it sees this website, immediately it's going to block. Because basically the firewall rules, what it's going to do, it's going to execute by sequence. The first rule, second rule, the third rule, like this is going to execute step by step. In case whenever it finds, whenever the first rule is matches, it's not going to check the second rule. In case if first rule doesn't match, then it will go to the second rule. If second rule doesn't match, it will go to third rule. So whenever the third rule match, then immediately it start executing that. So you can able to call figure multiple rules along with your content filtering. On top of the content filtering, you can able to apply the application, URL filtering, DNS filtering, and web content filtering as well. So these are the features you can able to do it. And DOS attack defenses, which is denial of service attack defenses, you can able to enable it as well. And spoofing defenses. And basically these DOS attacks, guys, you know that we have a, Whenever you are trying to establish a TCP connection, there is a three-way handshake. And sometimes what hackers and attackers they are trying to do, they will send only SYN packet and they will not send any acknowledge packet. So they will try to send you multiple packets and they are trying to make your server to become down. So that time you can able to define that in case if the uh, SYN packets is coming more than 2000 something, then you can able to say that block this connection. Like that you can able to define it. And spoofing is nothing but in case if somebody is trying to spoof their IP address or something, you can able to enable this and it's automatically identify that and it's going to drop that connection. So these are the features that you can able to configure it, guys. So most of the time you can able to configure each and every feature in your Dretec router. So it does the all kind of routing protocols. You can able to configure it and you can able to configure the hotspot. You can able to configure the VPNs and you can able to configure the firewall features. Everything you can able to configure it, guys. In the single box, it has everything. And by default, this JTAC Viga 3910 is going to support up to 500 VPN tunnels you can able to configure it. So that's the beauty of this appliance. And now, this is one of the very important guys because most of the people, they used to ask me from where we need to start, how we need to start and all. So basically, the default IP address for the JTAC is which is 192.168.1.1. That's the default IP. And by default, the DHCP is configured for this network. The moment when you connect your appliance, for example, let's say this is my Dretec router and it has a LAN interfaces are there. So just you can connect your PC on top of the LAN interface. Then by default, you will get your IP address from this subnet. Then after that, open the browser and type this IP address, which is 192.168.1.1. And it will prompt you the username and password. So you can specify username is admin and password is admin, which is the default 
by default. So after once you enter, you can change the, the admin password. So to change the admin password, you can go to the system maintenance and there you can able to see there is an administrator password. From there, you can able to change your administration password. And if you want to take the configuration backup, just go to the system maintenance. Then after that, click on the configuration backup. You can able to configure the, you can take the configuration backup as well. In case if you want to restore, you can do the restore as well. And again, if you want to connect the additional syslog server, you can able to go, just go to the system maintenance and click on the syslog and specify the syslog server IP. For example, if you have a solar wind syslog server, you can just configure there, you can give the IP address, then automatically all your syslog messages will come to your syslog server. And if you want, you can configure the time and date. For example, by default, it is it's selected as a Taiwan. In case if you want to change it as a UAE, you can select the time zone as a plus four and you can select to buy. So that the, you will see the right date and right time. Then in case if you want to reboot or if you want to do it the factory reset or something, just go to the system maintenance and click on the reboot system. Then you can able to do the reboot your device. In case if you want to do your factory reset, you can just go to the reboot system. There you can able to select it as well. There is a factory reset option is available. So that it's like you know soft uh, reset. You can say soft reset. And hard reset is nothing but you just take the paper clip. And if the customer tells you that I'm sorry, we forgot the password, then that time you don't have any choice. Simply what you can do, you just hold it, and automatically you just hold for 15 seconds. Then automatically all the configurations are going to erase, and top lines will go for factory reset. Then in case if you want to upgrade the firmware, you can able to upgrade the firmware as well. So to upgrade the firmware, by default, there is a site. Just I'm trying to open for you guys so that it's easy to understand. You just go here, www.dretech.com. Then did you see here, there is a support. Inside the support, you can able to see there is the latest firmware. So just click on the latest firmware or else you can go to the Dretech FTP site. So just click on the Dretec FTP site, then you can able to choose which is the appliance is belongs to you. So once you choose that appliance, you can download it. For example, mine is 391. Just click on that. Then after that, you can see here there is a firmware. In case if you want to read the document, what are the changes and uh, what are the new updates, you just go through the document, you can download it and you can have it book. Then if you are confident, just go to the firmware and you can able to see here there is a latest firmware, which they released on July which is 3.9.6.3. So you can just click on that and you can download the firmware as well. There is a zip file. Inside the zip file, guys, you can able to see sometimes there is a file .a all, and sometimes you will fail .rst. Two files will be there. Okay, make sure that if you select this file and you try to upgrade your system, it's going to erase all your configurations, guys. Keep remember that. Whatever configurations are there, in your device, it's going to reset everything and it's going to upgrade. So make sure that before you are going to upgrade your firewall or your data router, make sure that you need to take the backup. That is very important. In case if you select .all file, then what it will do, all your configurations, everything remains same and it simply is going to upgrade. So always we recommend to go with this. In case if it is a brand new system, then select .honest. So that is only the difference between these two devices. Okay, guys, now, so that is one. And again, if you go with some management wise, you just, for example, some people, they may ask you, I want to access my router from outside. By default, it's, it's not allowed to access, guys. You cannot able to ping also. So to do that, you need to go to the system maintenance and click on the management. Then if, if you see here, internet access control, by default, this is disabled, you need to enable it. Then after that, if you want to allow to the ping, then you need to disable this, which means you need to uncheck. Then which means the feature will be enabled and you can able to ping your device from outside. Okay, but mostly we don't recommend that to access your appliance from outside by using the public IP. So if anybody trying to access your device, you tell them either use SSL VPN or you can use IPsec VPN to access your device. So you can create the separate SSL account and give it to them so that they can able to access through the secure tunnel, guys. So always this, this is not recommended, but for emergency purposes, what we are going to do, we just allow temporary to access the device. That's it. Then after that, in case if you want to, by default, these are the ports 
we can use, for example, if you want to do a telnet, you can use port number 23. In case if you want to change, you can change this port number. And by default for HTTP, it's going to use port number 80. In case if you say that I want to use 80, 80, you can able to use that. In case if you want to change port number 443, you can able to change it. So these are the default port numbers. In case if you want to change the port numbers, you can able to change it as well. Yeah. So these are the things, the basic things you need to consider and you need to configure it. So again, for the management purpose, if you see here, uh, we got 3910. You can able to access your device to HTTP or HTTPS or Telnet or SSH. You can able to access it. And in case if you want to access your device to ACS, make sure that you need to enable the TR69. Actually, we are planning to make by next month the ACS trying guys for everyone. And we have a cloud-based ACS access control server. So basically it's a cloud-based. In case if your customer have a multiple locations, through single dashboard, if you want to manage or if you want to configure all the devices, then you can able to do it through ACS. But again, the Draytech, the good feature is that through your Draytech router itself, you can able to manage up to 50 access points, guys. And 30 switches, you can able to manage it. And in case if something, something is going wrong in your router or something, you can able to send the alert as well. By default, it's going to send the alert to you as a SMS or an email, you can able to receive it. And you can configure your syslog messages as well. So this is like for the management purpose. So the next thing is that, so for the sales, you can contact us sales at datawise.com. For technical, you can just contact me guys and you can drop me an email, sashodatawise.com. Since uh, as a partner, I am, I'm available for all the time. And in case if you want to see this device, and if you want to know more about this you know, features, and if you want to test this device, and device is with me along with the license, and you guys can visit at any time, and uh, you can come to our office, and we are available. And mostly if you want to play, if you are getting a holiday on Saturday, just come to our office, I will be available, I'll give you the device too. And I have a device along with the license. So in case if you want to test, anybody can visit, you can take the device and test it. Yeah, any questions guys? In case if I'm not able to answer this time because due to the time and you just send it to me, say sure datawise.com and I'm going to reply to you back. Okay guys? So in case if any sales related things, in case if you have any business, this kind of stuff, and if you want to discuss with me to close the deal or project, just I am there, I'm available for you. We will do a separate session for you along with your customer. And after that, we will collect all the requirement based on that, which route is going to show up and we will suggest that and we are going, we are going to close the deal. And uh, you always coordinate with our uh, account manager so that they will help you out for the quotes and all. And for the technical, I'm there to help you out. You can visit our office at any time. We are in Bur Dubai. So you can come at any time to our office. Yeah, any questions, guys? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir, thank you so much. Thank you for the wishes, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, sir, thank you. But, uh, and also I just want to tell you guys, we have created a YouTube channel. And in case if you want to see the step-by-step, -step, because which was prepared by me, you can just go through uh, just you to open the YouTube and type DBCom technology. There you can able to see all the Dretek videos, guys. It's already prepared and we uploaded all the videos and you can go through it because those videos will show it to you step-by-step -step configurations. So that uh, right now, Mr. Ali is trying to ask me something regarding that load balancing. And I prepared a very nice video, sir. You can just go through it and you can have a look. Yeah, still, if you are finding some difficulty, you can just send me an email and I'm going to share it with you the Zoom link. Then after that, we will discuss about it. Yeah, anything else, guys, if you have any concerns, or, because right now this 3910 is one of the very good product, guys. This is the high-end product and it has all the features. You no need to worry about it. Each and every feature, it's going to work according to the customer requirements and it's going to fulfill your requirement, I'm sure that you will be very much happy about it. 
Yeah. In case if you, if you want to know about this product, you can send me an email. Technically, if you want to know more about it, in case if you say that, no, sir, I just want to visit your office and I want to see the device and I want to see what are the features I have and I want to configure it, you are always welcome. I'm there to support you and I'm there in the Saturday in my office. I'm available. You guys can visit at any time. And also, I just mentioned here, my email address is seshu at datawise.com. You just send me an email and I'll be available. I'll share you the Zoom link and we will sit and we'll discuss about the product. In case if you want to test, you can test. But if you want to see the videos, I just open it for you so that, you know, it will be more easy. Just you can type www.youtube.com. There you can type dvcom technology you just type this one guys so if you type dvcom technology see here there is a dretec you can able to see all the videos which i prepared for the dretec 3910 and 2916 uh, 2962 and uh, some other 2915 models some other models also it's available guys you just go through it and i have given step by step as well yeah so there is a question over there Yeah, Mr. Ali, do one thing. You can just go through the video. Otherwise, do one thing. Uh, if you are available, then let me know. Tomorrow, I'm going to be share you the link and we will have a sit and we will discuss about it. Yeah. Is it okay for that? Because I'm going to show it to you with the real device. Because I'm going to get the device in my experience center. We have a device. You can visit our office or else I'm going to take the remote and I'll show it to you exactly how the load balance is going to work. So basically your concern is that aggregation, right? So if you are going to enable session based, by default, if you see there, there is IP based and session based is there. If you select the session based, it's going to aggregate the multiple internet connections, okay? Let's say that uh, there is a 10 Mbps connection one, 10 Mbps connection two, 10 Mbps connection three. So it's going to aggregate together and it will give you like 30 Mbps is the two. Are you clear? Yeah, Mr. Ali. So the bandwidth you are going to get like a 30 Mbps you are going to get. Yeah. So in case if you really want to see the device and you can visit my office and you can drop me an email and uh, you can uh, you can come to us. And uh, I think, do you know where is our location, guys? We are in Bardubai, Bank Street. And uh, we are in the atrium building, which is 506. That's our office. You guys can visit at any time. Yeah, anything else that, any questions, guys, so far? Is everything is clear for you? Mr. Ali, is it okay for you? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Right, guys. Thank you so much. And if you have any concerns or clarifications, you just send me an email. I will be aware. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, sir.